Today we're going to be going over how to install a three-way switch. Now I will not be actually showing you how to run the wire, but I will be showing you how to wire the physical device itself. Now a three-way switch you can see has one, two, three points for your hot wires to connect to, and then of course one ground screw. Now the defining feature that you're going to see with a three-way switch is a pair of travelers goes to a pair of screws. And also, when you enter a room, if there's two switches that control one single light, that's a three-way switch. Let's get to it. Start off in your panel box and turn off the breaker that controls the circuit you're working on. Then get your non-contact voltage tester. Press it, you heard the beep turn on. Should be able to run it on some clothing. You hear that beep? That confirms that this device works by picking up static electricity. Touch all the conductors in the area you're going to be working on. It's not beeping. Rub it on the clothing again. We know it still works, so now get your meter. In this case, I use my Fluke tester. We're going to go on to voltage AC, that's V squiggly line. And I'm going to use my ground reference. My box is grounded in this case, so I'll touch the conductors, not seeing any voltage light up. We're good. This circuit is dead and the breaker is shut off. We can safely work in this area. Before wiring the three-way switch, it's important to identify the incoming power side and the three conductors that we're gonna land to our three-way switch, which then go out through the rest of the circuit. So in this case, you can see I have a black and a red coming in. Now, because I have a double pull breaker at my panel box, both of these are energized when the circuit turns on. So I'm actually just going to put a wire nut. Now, this is 10 gauge coming in, so I'm putting 10 gauge Wago. So I'm putting a wire nut over the red one. We're not gonna use that guy. And then I've also gone ahead and I've put a wire nut on my neutral. And I've also put a wire nut on my green ground coming in, and my box is also grounded. That's where this jumper wire comes in. Physically, there's a wire bonding this metal box in case this box gets energized. So, I'm going to take my ground going out. It's gonna land that under the wire nut. Boom, see how easy that is? That's why Wagos are one of the best options out there. Now, Let's do our neutral. Switches don't touch the neutral. The only thing you're switching with any switch is going to be hot legs. So, just like that, stripped a little bit off. My incoming neutral just goes under a wire nut with my outgoing neutral. So that way at the end of the line, I have a return path for my current via the neutral and then I have a secondary return path for my ground. So now we'll just shove these, this neutral in the back of the box, try and give us as much space as possible. I'm gonna shove this unused hot in the back. It's red, don't get confused. We don't care about it. Here's what we do care about. Incoming black, that's an incoming hot. And these two, this black, this red. Now we're going to get used to the phrase a pair of travelers goes to a pair of screws. As long as you remember that it's almost impossible to screw this up. Simply strip back about three quarters of an inch. These are my pair of travelers we're calling them. They're in this Romex and they come out the other side and they're going to land to our other switch. So, you can see there's a black screw and two brass colored screw. So, for your switch, you're going to take your black power coming in. You're going to land that under the black screw. Now, it should be stated the color does not matter electrically. You know, this could be a pink wire for all I care. 
The only thing we care about, it's not going to make it work any differently, right? We just care that it's the same wire on the other end. So my incoming power gets landed under my black screw. And you can see I didn't have to make hooks with this style because, with this style of switch because it has these plates. I prefer those, they're way easier. They stay on really good, they're quick. So a pair of travelers goes to a pair of screws. You can see there's two black screws. So the travelers, one's gonna go on one black, or one's gonna go on one brass screw, excuse me. And the other one, the other traveler is going to go to the other brass colored screw. We'll get a close up shot here in a minute. So this makes a little bit more sense. So here's the other traveler. This is red in this case. And that's going to go under this other brass colored screw. Also in my description, I'll include um, a wiring diagram so you can better understand it, as well as any links to tools and materials you might want for this project. Now I'm just taking a short length of my ground. It's gonna act as a jumper that I can just land under. My green ground screw on my device. Now something kind of neat, you'll see, this one is a better example, you can physically see it. That ground bonds to all the exposed metal out here. So it goes to the yoke, which then goes to the box, so it makes this whole thing grounded. Here you can see a pair of travelers going to a pair of screws. You can see they actually go in the Romex together. Red goes to your brass. Black goes to a brass because they're traveling together. Incoming power lands there to the black screw. Green ground bonds to the back of the box and will be bonded throughout to every device. And then neutral wire nutted together so that there's a return current path from your end line device. Now we're just gonna tape over those screws. And we do that to prevent shorts in the future, bugs, dust, fingers, you name it. Pulling things out while it's still energized. Now, we're just gonna have to shove that in the box, go on to the next one. Here we are downstream at the next three-way switch. And then after the th this second three-way switch, you're gonna go to your endline device. So here you can see Incoming travelers, incoming neutral, incoming ground. So I'm going to start with grounds. I like to bond all our grounds together. I usually like to start with that first. I know I didn't do that last time, but it's a good idea to usually start with your grounds. So leave yourself a good five, six inches hanging out, just trimming it up. Because I have a metal box, you have to bond. That's what this jumper is. Look at that, way it goes, super simple, super quick. If you're a homeowner, DIYer, oh my gosh. Use these guys, they're really hard to screw up. All your bare copper grounds go together. You're gonna need a jumper, just give yourself a few inches. Five or six probably works better than the short piece I got, but this guy is then gonna go on our device. Let's tuck those out of the way. Next, let's go do our neutrals. Again, I said it before, but switches aren't going to control your neutral. So you always need that return path. You don't want to break it. Your only, only thing you're breaking when you use a switch is you're breaking your hot connection, not your, ground, not your return path for the current. So you're going to put these under a wire nut. Boom, just like that. Tuck it in the back of the box. Give yourself some space because you're gonna have to shove a switch in here. Okay, now what do we have left? We have our pair of travelers and then we have the outgoing hot, which goes then to our light. 
In this case, it's going to a receptacle, but I'm just going to plug in a lamp and it's gonna function exactly as a light would. So let's switch, or excuse me, let's strip our travelers. Three quarters of an inch is plenty. And uh, while I'm here, I'll strip the outgoing hot. How do I know it's outgoing? You can physically see that it's coming out of a different Romex cable. And these two are physically in the same cable, which is the incoming power from our other switch. Let's start with our ground. Simply put it under and tighten it down. If you get a cheaper three-way switch that doesn't have these tabs, or honestly any device, all the devices, the higher end devices all have these like tabs you can you hear rattling around. I highly recommend those, they're way easier. But if you don't get that style, you go with the more cost effective, you're going to have to make sure your hooks are facing clockwise so that when you tighten these, they tighten up. If you have them facing the other way, the hook facing to the left, when you tighten the screw, it will actually open the hook up and you'll have a loose connection. So if that's confusing or it's a pain to make the hooks, you can't get it down, just get spend the extra dollar and get the device that has the tabs. So a pair of travelers go to a pair of screws. There's only two brass colored screws. Doesn't matter which one the traveler goes under. They just both have to go under a pair of screws. So I'll put my red traveler under this brass one. I'll put my black traveler under this brass one. Tighten them up good and snug. Don't want them going anywhere. And then our outgoing power to our lights, in this case the receptacle, but you get the point. Outgoing power is going to go under the black screw. Not so bad when you think about it now, right? So you have incoming power goes under a black, outgoing power goes under a black, and then the traveler. Pretty simple. You can see we did the first one over there. Now we're on to our second one. Here's our pair of travelers going to a pair of screws. Remember that saying? Doesn't matter which one the red goes on, just has to go to a pair of screws. You can see that, that that's a little bit long of a conductor, so I'm actually gonna shorten that up and shove it under the screw a little bit better. But, a pair of travelers go to a pair of brass colored screws, and then outgoing power to your light, or in this case, it's gonna be a receptacle that's gonna have a lamp in it. Outgoing power goes to the black screw. Grounds bond together along with the back of the metal box. And then neutral, they're just wire nutted together because you need that return current path. So incoming on the black, outgoing on the two brass, which are a pair of travelers. Come all the way over here, pair of travelers. Go to the two brass, then outgoing power on the black to your device. Simple, right? Now let's taper up. Again, taping just helps with dust, moisture, bugs, exploratory fingers. <laughs> so we'll just shove this all in the box and there's no right or wrong way to have this up or down, right? Because there is no on off because if I flip this on, I can turn it off on the other one, which means I could turn it off or I can turn it on by flipping it down, and the other one, you know what I mean? Makes sense. Anyway, I'll shove this in the box, and we'll cut to it, and I'll show you that it works. Here's where things get fun. Just turned on the breaker. Obviously, we have everything closed up. Put the face plates on. 
<laughs> this is just a yard light because it's almost Halloween. Here's the final test. As you can see, one switch, turn it on. Should be able to turn it off from the other switch. Let's flip this one on and off. On, off, on, off. So that's how a three-way switch works. Super simple. Hope this helps. Thanks for sticking around and watching through this whole video. This is a really important electrical DIY project that a lot of homeowners do wrong. So I hope this provides a little bit of clarity. Just remember, a pair of travelers goes to a pair of screws and then it's almost impossible to screw up. So, you know, we have our three-way here, goes to another three-way, and then finally your end line device. So <laughs> I unplugged the, the little ghost lamp, but thanks for watching, work safe, Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Give me suggestions for other videos. I have links down below in my description for things you can buy to help out the channel, things that can help out your own project, and they're at no extra cost to you. Leave comments. I like replying to them. I really want more suggestions too if you like this type of content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.